In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about the beta sheet. Now this beta sheet is one of the most prominent secondary structure. Actually speaking, this is the second most common type of secondary structure. It is the second most common type. So which one is the first most common type? The first most common, it is the alpha helix. And that is the reason it is called as alpha. Alpha is the first alphabet, right? And beta is the second alphabet. So this is the second most common type. Now this beta sheet, they are made up of two or more polypeptide segment. So two or more polypeptide segments. And this each of this polypeptide segment, it is known as beta strand, beta strand. Now to explain you this beta sheet, I need to first draw the structure of it, right? So so here I had drawn a two polypeptide segment. Remember, there can be a more than two polypeptide segment, but for this per for this illustration purpose, I am drawing only two polypeptide segment. Okay. Now let's write the molecular arrangement. So this red mark is the alpha carbon. This is the side chain of this alpha carbon. Now let's draw the polypeptide bonds. So here I had shown you two polypeptide segment and if you examine closely this is the N terminal and this is the C terminal for this polypeptide segment and this is the N terminal and this is the C terminal of this lower polypeptide segment. Now this both polypeptide segments they are arranged laterally that means side by side. Now to stay it in this position it needs some type of bonding right. So for that we have hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bonds takes place between this hydrogen and this oxygen. See this hydrogen, it is part of this amide, right? So this hydrogen is the amide hydrogen, amide hydrogen and this oxygen, it is the part of this C double bond O. So we call this oxygen as a carbonyl oxygen. So this is carbonyl oxygen. So hydrogen bond, it takes part between this amide hydrogen and carbonyl oxygen. So hydrogen bond is like this. Similarly over here, hydrogen bonds formation takes place. Here also hydrogen bond forms. Here also between this oxygen and hydrogen. Here also between this hydrogen and oxygen. So as you can see, at all the part, this hydrogen is always amide hydrogen and this oxygen is always carbonyl oxygen and both of these are the part of some peptide bond like this amide group, it is the part of this peptide bond, this carbonyl group, it is part of this peptide bond. Similarly over here, this amide hydrogen, it is a part of this peptide bond and this is also a peptide bond. So we can say that this polypeptide chains are aligned laterally, polypeptide chains are aligned laterally and it is further stabilized by the hydrogen bonds. Now these hydrogen bonds, they are between amide hydrogen, amide hydrogen and carbonyl oxygen. Now to schematically illustrate this type of beta structure, we can use broad arrow, right? Suppose in this case, this is the N terminal and this is the C terminal. And we know that peptide bonds direction is from the N terminal to the C terminal. We, we can represent this entire chain by the single broad arrow like this. So the base of arrow will be located at the N terminal and the pointed part of the arrow will be located at the C terminal side. In this case of lower chain, what is happening? N terminal is on the left side and C terminal is on the right side. So lower arrow is in the opposite direction, right? Now this is N terminal and this is the C terminal. So direction is here N to C, here also direction is N to C. We can see that both of these chains are anti-parallel, both are going into the opposite direction. So this is anti-parallel arrangement, right? But its reverse is also true that we can also see the parallel arrangement in case of beta, uh, beta sheets. So how does it looks like? It does looks like this. 
and the second segment can also be in the same direction. So, in, in this case, what is happening? N terminal is on the same side and C terminal is on the same side. So, such type of arrangement, whenever it is there, we call it as a parallel beta sheet. Parallel beta sheet. And this one is the anti parallel beta sheet. So, this is the schematic representation of this beta sheet. Now, the question arises that are these both chains are a part of single chain or two different chain. So, both possibilities can be there. See, it can be a part of single chain. It can be a part of single chain like this. So, this is the anti parallel arrangement, right? So, both arrows direction is in the opposite direction. This is C, this is N, this is N terminal, this is the C terminal. So, if single chain is there, then it can be like this. This can be a single chain. So, what is happening? This is the N terminal and this is the C terminal. So, this part, this segment, then this segment, both are part of single chain and they are making this intra chain hydrogen bond and because of that, it can be a part of single chain. Okay? So, there is a intra chain, intra chain hydrogen bonds. However, this both segment, it can be a part of two different chain, two different chains. So, it can be like this, right? So, there can be one polypeptide chain like this and second polypeptide chain like this, okay? And this segment of both the polypeptide chain are making hydrogen bonds and ultimately beta sheet structure. So, here we can see that there is an interchain, interchain hydrogen bonds. In case of parallel beta sheet also, both the arrangements are possible like this. So, this is parallel sheet. Now, if it is a part of single chain, single chain, then C. This is N terminal, this is C terminal, this is N terminal, this is C terminal. So, what happens? It can be like this. So, this is the N terminal of this chain and this is the C terminal of this chain. So, now this much segment is participating in beta sheet. Well, this segment is not participating and this again, this same part, this segment, it participates in the beta sheet. So, it can be single chain. So, again over here intra chain hydrogen bond will be there and both can be a part of different chain also, different chain. So, here I mean to say that in case of beta sheet, both intra chain as well as inter chain hydrogen bonds pattern can be seen. Now, three dimensionally what happens? In this case, this successive carbon, this successive alpha carbon are not in the same plane. One carbon is above the plane and the, its immediate next carbon, next alpha carbon, it is below the plane. Then its next carbon will be above the plane. So, it will look like a pleated structure. See, see, in this case, this is the same diagram as I drawn over here, but in this case, it will be clear why it is called as pleated. See, this alpha carbon, it is above the plane. So, I will fold it like this. Now, this carbon is below the plane. So, I will keep it in the below side. Then again, this next alpha carbon, it is above the plane, right? So, it is coming upside. Now, this alpha carbon, it is below the plane. So, what will happen? Ultimately, this zigzag pattern is seen, right? So, here you can see there is a up and down in case of alpha carbon. This alpha carbon is above the plane. Its immediate next alpha carbon, it is below the plane. Next alpha carbon, it is above the plane. So, such structure, such pleats are seen. So, that is why beta sheet, this beta sheet, it is also known as beta pleated sheet, beta pleated sheet. One more thing to note over here is that this side chain R group. See, this alpha carbon side chain R group is on this side. Its immediate next alpha carbons R group is in the opposite side. Its next alpha carbons R group is in the opposite side. So, we can say that R groups of adjacent amino acids are extended in opposite direction. So, I will write it down. R groups of adjacent amino acids extends in opposite side. 
Now, if we compare the structure of alpha helix with the beta pleated sheet, this is beta pleated. If we compare the structure of beta pleated sheet with the alpha helix, then there are many differences, but two differences are there, which is very striking difference. One is beta pleated sheet, it is fully extended. There is no any coiling, right? See, here it is a fully extended structure, whereas in case of alpha helix, what is happening? It is coil like structure. So, there is a coiling is saying it is not fully extended, right? The second striking difference is that, see, in this structure, this is the polypeptide backbone, right? It is going into this horizontal direction, whereas hydrogen bonds are perpendicular to this polypeptide backbone, right? This is the perpendicular fashion. So, in case of beta pleated sheet, hydrogen bonds are perpendicular, perpendicular to polypeptide backbone. Whereas, in case of alpha helix, see what happens, this is the alpha helix, right? The axis of alpha helix or you can say axis of polypeptide backbone is this vertical and hydrogen bonds are also parallel to this. So, here we can say that in alpha helix, hydrogen bonds, these are parallel to polypeptide backbone. Now, one more thing that I need to discuss is the amphipathic nature of this polypeptide chain. See, in case of beta sheet, beta sheet, it contains so many R groups, right? R groups and these R groups are extended outward from this chains. So, this some of the R groups may be hydrophilic, hydrophilic and some of the R groups may be hydrophobic. So, what will happen ultimately this beta sheet, some part of the beta sheet will be hydrophilic and some part of the beta sheet is going to be hydrophobic. So, whenever single molecule contain hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic part, we call it, call them as a amphipathic, amphipathic molecule. So, beta sheet is the amphipathic. What about alpha helix? The same logic applies to alpha helix also. It has also so many R group which are projecting outside from this alpha helix. So, some of the, those R groups might be hydrophilic and some of them can be a hydrophobic. So, ultimately alpha helix is also called as amphipathic molecule. Okay? <clears throat> now, what are the different examples of this beta sheet? So, here we write examples of beta sheets. See, more or less beta sheet structure occurs in almost all the protein. But there are certain protein which are contain so much amount of beta sheet that we need to mention it over here. The first is flavodoxin. First example is flavodoxin. Second example is silk fibroin. And third example is the carbonic anhydrase. Now, in case of flavodoxin, most of the beta sheet, it is in the parallel arrangement parallel sheets, parallel beta sheets are seen in the flavodoxin. In case of silk fibroin, which is exclusively made up of beta sheets, it is its polypeptide chains are in the anti-parallel arrangement. In case of carbonic hydrase, it is 50-50. So, both the structure, both parallel as well as anti-parallel, both are seen in case of carbonic anhydrase. So, this was all about the beta pleated sheet. In the next video, I will try to cover remaining secondary structures of protein. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.